Traditional crops in Hawaii are experiencing a renaissance, and there's a demand from consumers, markets, and chefs for these traditional foods. <laughs> Delivering the best quality fruit is essential to developing the market for breadfruit. The key to providing good quality breadfruit is understanding pre-harvest, harvest, and post-harvest practices. <laughs> There are three stages of maturity for breadfruit, green, mature, and ripe. This would be unsuitable for market. But for delivery to market, you almost always want to pick breadfruit when it is mature. Many people make the mistake of picking breadfruit when it is green or immature. When cooked, immature fruit has a rubbery texture and little flavor. Very little latex. A breadfruit that has been picked in the green, immature stage does not mature or develop full flavor. A mature breadfruit has a smooth texture and good flavor. It is preferred for most dishes including stews, soups, curries, fries, etc. Coloring between each segment here. You can identify a mature breadfruit by changes in the stem color and skin color. A smoothing out of the skin and coloring between the sections. If you leave a mature breadfruit on the counter for a day or two, it becomes ripe edible without even having to be cooked. A ripe breadfruit is soft to the touch and is best used in desserts or sweet dishes. Beautiful, creamy yellow. There are over 120 different varieties of breadfruit. Three varieties of breadfruit in Hawaii are ulu, the Hawaiian variety, maafala, the Samoan variety, and mainpatak, the Micronesian variety. Each variety of breadfruit looks different when it is mature. Download the guide for detailed information. Once you have identified a mature fruit in the tree, you need to harvest it without damaging the tree, the fruit, or yourself. It's best to keep trees pruned so you don't have to harvest from tall trees. It is more efficient and safe. You can use an orchard ladder if you need to reach higher, but you should not climb trees. These are some of the tools and how to use this them. This is one of our favorite harvesting tools. It's very commonly used. It's a wire rim with a basket underneath and it's attached to a painter's pole. And what you do is you, you get the, the ulu you see, into this notch in the rim. This is a metal notch, it's quite sturdy. And you twist the notch and the ulu falls into the basket. Another way to use the wire rim basket is to also have a sickle mounted on a pole. The sickle can be pulled right across the stem and the fruit will fall right into the basket. This is one of our favorite tools. It's called a cut and hold picker. It has a regular cutting blade like a hand clippers and then on the other side there are these metal or sometimes plastic pieces that hold the fruit that you've just cut with this blade. The idea with the cut and hold pruner is to get right onto the stem, in the middle of the stem, and cut swiftly and it will hold the fruit. Harvesters should wear a hard hat and eye protection to avoid injury. Sickle, Whichever tool you are using, stem. try not to cut branches to or sure shoot tips. Not damage the growing tip or the branch of the tree by cutting into it. Fruit should not be allowed to hit the ground. Fruit that hits the ground is fine for home use after washing, but is not suitable for market. It bruises and does not meet food safety standards for sales. Freshly harvested breadfruit has been warmed by the sun and air. This is called field heat. Continued warmth accelerates the ripening process. Place harvested fruit in the shade to cool as soon as possible. Don't place it in the sun. The breadfruit can get a sunburn, which damages the fruit. Commercial growers may also use an ice bath. After harvesting, clip stems and drain in a cardboard box. Boxes should be sturdy and well ventilated and allow for only one or two layers of fruit to avoid heat buildup. Plastic crates are a good choice for field harvesting and brief storage. Cardboard produce boxes with good ventilation can also be used. Don't use deep plastic tubs or bags. They restrict airflow and fruit can move around during transport, leading to bruising. Post-harvest refers to preparing and storing the fruit for sale, cooking, or processing. 
Breadfruit can easily bruise, ripen, or decay when not handled properly, so it must be handled carefully. High quality, firm, unblemished fruit will fetch the best price. When you arrive at the packing house, rinse the fruit, rubbing gently with hands or a soft bristle brush to remove latex and debris. The next step is to sort the fruit by size, maturity, quality, and variety. Download the guide for detailed information. If you need to store the fruit, it can be fully submerged in cool, clean water. Refrigeration is not optimal as it causes the skin to brown, which is not preferred for most markets. It's still firm and edible, but the appearance is not good. The ideal boxes for packaging and delivering are plastic crates, strong, plain, or wax cardboard with dividers. Your customers will want mature, great-tasting, and good-looking fruit. Proper pre-harvest, harvest, and post-harvest practices will ensure that you get the best price for your fruit. Do your part in promoting traditional crops for food security in Hawaii. Learn more in detail by downloading the guide at breadfruit.info.